We got one. First verbal commitment of the summer, fresh off his Miami official visit. We got one for the defensive backfield. From the 205 to the 305, Timothy Merritt. Welcome to the U. You are locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. June and July are going to continue to be busy months for recruiting for the University of Miami. I am Alex Dono, University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet and writer for allhurricanes.com. Thank you so much to the everydayers for making Locked On Canes your first listen and your first watch today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts. We're free on YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I don't have to ask if there's such a thing as a happy Monday, because I think today is a happy Monday. And today's episode of Locked On Canes is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. On this episode, we will talk about what's being said by top recruits coming out of their Miami Hurricanes official visits this past weekend. We're going to check in on what happened at the OT7 finals because some top Miami recruits were competing in that. But yes, we do have to talk about the newest Miami Hurricanes commit, cornerback Timothy Merritt out of Birmingham, Alabama, six foot two, hundred eighty pounds. Who better to talk about that with than the recruiting overlord himself? Brian Smith joins us. Brian, how are you? Uh, a little bit road weary, but uh, Tampa to Birmingham back down to where I live. You know, it's been all over the place, but welcome to recruiting in June. Well, and you spent a lot of time now in Alabama and you told me you have watched Parker High School before in it, Birmingham. That's the high school of Timothy Merritt. So. Miami's new cornerback commit, who loved his official visit so much, he locked things in verbally with Miami last night. Brian, what can you tell the folks out there about this six foot two hundred eighty pound cornerback? When I first walked out to the spring game, when I went and saw Parker, they had three DBs that were power five guys, so they got they've got players. And I was like, okay, who's this? Who's this? Who's this? I was figuring out who's who, and just like the look of them, like Merritt looks like the guy that's going to play in the NFL. Just like the physique, the length, and all that. So I get why he had a bunch of offers. Then I saw the way he played, the way he ran. The only thing with him is just finalizing technique, which most high school kids need. But the physical tools are as good as any player in the country at his spot. How well he develops will be up to him and the staff at Miami. But great kid, loves football, plays hard, physical, has the length and speed you're looking for. This is the kind of guy that you can set your DB board around and be happy with. Wow, I, I love that. Um, so, you know, Brian, something that, people will will notice about a lot of the commitments Miami's been getting a lot of players that are visiting a, a lot of guys out of places like Georgia and Alabama and of course in the state of Alabama Chavis Jackson the DB's coach who was Timothy Merritt's primary recruiter uh he's from that state and you spent a lot of time you live in Alabama now Brian uh is it interesting to see how many of the top kids in that and obviously Auburn and Alabama are going to get most of these guys but to sure. see how many of the top players in the state Miami is in it for I think it's a bit unique, but there is the caveat that a few of the guys on the staff have coached in that state or like Chevis are from this state. Remember, Mario spent time with Nick in Tuscaloosa. So you have to remember that. And you also have to think about it this way. When he went to Oregon, they always recruited Alabama. They always get like one Alabama kid every year. He likes that state. It's a priority for the Hurricanes. And as long as Cristobal is the head coach for Miami, that's probably going to be a state they get at least one guy. The kids they got last year, by the way. Are really really yeah. good out of Alabama. Yeah. So in in terms of merit, uh, the other schools that were considered to be trending for him, uh, the Tennessee Volunteers, Arkansas, Alabama, and Auburn in the mix. You can probably speak to the Auburn and Alabama interest, Brian. Like, how, how interested do you think that they were in merit? I know he has offers from both. When I talked to Timothy at the spring game, I talked to him towards the end of the contest on the sidelines. I asked him, okay, what about these schools? This school and all this, and he at the time had no idea where he was going to go. It's only a few weeks back, but he mentioned that he was going to visit Auburn and Alabama probably during the season, but they were in the mix. And then about like Tennessee and Miami and all this, we're going to be really, really soon. And that was it. 
But Auburn was a school that I was told liked him a lot. Alabama wasn't as sure about him. Auburn's right. a threat because they, you know, they've got a lot of NIL money too. It's closer to home, all of that. But for him to commit right after Miami, they must have really struck a chord with him because he's been to Auburn and other places before and he didn't get to this level. Like Miami did something. So I'm not sure it matters as much. Um, I don't think Alabama is like after him, after him. So they may not be, have much of a shot anyway. I, I think this will stick, to be honest with you. I, I like to hear that. Um, you know, if you look at the recruiting services, he's a three-star on 24-7, a three-star on On3 and on ESPN. Rivals has got him as a four-star. Do you think this is a player who could maybe ascend and get four-star ratings on some of the other services outside of Rivals as well? Just depends on how he plays this year. Parker is really, really talented. Uh, his running mate at the other corner position is Naeem Offord, who's arguably the best corner in the country, and he's committed to Ohio State. Everybody's going to go to that school to scout Offord, which is the number one reason I was there. He's phenomenal. But you're going to see the other kid. I was like, Who's, oh, that's Merritt. That's that kid. Everybody's going to see him this year. So he's going to get plenty of eyeballs on him, so his chances to go up the ladder are very high. So you were just, uh, you talk about your road weariness driving around a lot in the Southeast. You were just at OT7 in Tampa, and you you observed a handful of Miami Hurricanes targets at that event, Brian. Why don't we start with Jamie French? Uh, how did he play, and what's the latest in his recruitment? Because I did hear he said that you know he no longer wants people to consider uh, necessarily having a leader for him or a top three. He, he definitely wants to make it at least seem like things are more open for his recruitment. I've known Jamie since he was in eighth grade and uh, we have a pretty candid relationship. And I asked him, I just walked up to him and he didn't see me from behind. And I said, can I just go ahead and say you're committing to Texas? And he looked up and he started laughing and he said, the official visits are going to tell the, tell the tale. And he went into some detail. Uh, his Ohio state visit did not go as planned. I'll leave it at that. They have tailed really? off. Yeah. It, I was told they screwed up really bad. I don't know. I wasn't given details, and there were a bunch of people around, so I didn't ask you. That, that's Ohio State you're talking about? Yeah. So they do a tremendous job with recruiting. So I don't yeah. know what that means. I didn't ask Especially you. receivers. I know. So he said that they were trying to patch it up with his mom, this, that, and the other, and I just I just left it. Uh, Texas is the team that is allegedly trending with him, and that's why I was joking with him about it. But I was told it's not going to be Texas either, and it's because they're going to get another kid at receiver – I'm sure NIL plays into this, but Florida State is not as prominent with him. Uh, Miami was like the first school he kind of mentioned in general, a bunch LSU and Tennessee. There's a bunch of schools that are still possible, but he's nowhere near ready to make a decision. I'm confident with that, and that's based on a face-to-face -face yeah. conversation. Um, as for how he played, dominant. <laughs> he uh, he YouTubed a few kids, and <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know why, guys – try to play bump coverage and they don't put hands on. So you'll get hands on Jamie. It's, it's a touchdown. And I watched that from up close a couple of times. So still has the same speed, still has the same moves. And uh, he backs up to talk. How about that? Miami uh, may still have a decent oh, shot do. there with the five-star wide receiver out of Mandarin in Jacksonville. I love that. Well, I, I want to talk about one of Miami's top cornerback targets when we come back, just landed one, but there's a South Florida kid. Miami would love to have another receiver who was at OT7 that I want to get Brian's take on. So, folks, the message here is we got a lot still to discuss, including what a few of Miami's official visitors said coming out of their visits. You want to keep it locked right here. We're only getting started on this brand-new episode of Locked on Canes. Oh, and you know we're only getting started with LinkedIn jobs. Folks, when you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. Guys, I know this works. I have found jobs through LinkedIn Jobs before. It isn't just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. 2.5 million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms 
and conditions apply. Thank you so much for making this Recruiting Overlord episode of Locked On Canes your first listen and your first watch today. Hey, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. So, uh, Brian, when we're talking about players who actually are closer to making a decision or at least a verbal commitment, right? I know even when a player commits, it's still, you know, somewhat open till signing day. But uh, Chris Ewald Jr., uh, he has he told you he's planning to announce on July 27th or June 27th. Sorry. So that that's just a couple of weeks away for Ewald. Um, where do you think Miami stands in the recruitment of this four star cornerback out of Chaminade? Oh, well, it looks like it's Miami or Georgia. Those are the two visits he's getting ready to take uh, back to back. The weird thing about it, and Chris is not the most talkative kid in the world. He, he keeps it pretty close to the vest, but. He said he doesn't like to travel much, and that's why he's just going to take those visits. He doesn't like to travel much. Miami's a car drive, whereas Georgia is a plane ride. I'll go with Miami. So that's as simple as it gets. Uh, Georgia's always hard to beat for recruits. They're going to have another phenomenal class. But Miami's the local school, and he's just more comfortable, I think, there. So unless Georgia just blows him away, I like the Hurricanes. I, I like to hear that. Uh, what about receiver Dallas Wilson, who's committed to Oregon? But there's there's just been a lot of smoke about how hard Miami's trying to yeah. flip the four-star receiver. Well, after watching him yet again at OT7, I understand why. Six three guys that run by DBs <laughs> are always coveted. Um, he's he's very special football player. Miami, depending on who you talk to, and I, I two people I trust very much that know his recruitment. One thinks that he's going to go to Oregon, and one's adamant that he's going to go to Miami. His recruitment is very difficult to follow, so take it for what it's worth. But I know I'm going to go see him this fall and watch one of his practices and talk to him then because I don't get the sense that his recruitment is anywhere near done. Uh, Oregon commitment or not, I don't really consider him. I consider him a a lean to Oregon. That's how I would put that. Miami is doing a tremendous job of recruiting him. He is arguably their top priority. He's the perfect boundary receiver, which they need another for this next season because the guy they just got from Houston is going to play one year, and he's good, but you don't, you'll still just have Isaiah Horton that's a true boundary. So you're talking about Dallas could come in and be the number two guy just walking in the door, and I'm sure that's very appealing. So Miami's done a good job. Um, just like with Jamie French, Jamie said he's got a great relationship with Kevin Beard. He does a great job with Dallas too, so they're going to be in it till the end. Yeah, and Dallas, uh, he was originally supposed to visit Miami this past weekend, but – competing at OT7. He moved his visit. I think he's going to be visiting this coming weekend. Now, one of the players we already talked about is actually going to be on campus tomorrow, Brian. Uh, Jamie French is supposed to do a midweek visit, I think Tuesday, Wednesday. I don't know if it goes into Thursday, but a midweek visit starting Tuesday. Same thing for another top receiver, Vernell Brown. Uh, What's going on uh, lately with Brown, Brian? And obviously, uh, official visits can change things up, so maybe Miami hits it out of the park, but haven't really felt like he's been trending Miami's way in recent weeks. Uh, I like Florida State there. I'm I'm pretty confident with the Knowles. Um, He could make a decision this summer, but he told me at OT7 that it could go into the the fall. He's he's honestly not very sure. Uh, He's as candid as any recruit in the country. Great kid. Ohio State, it's just probably too far, or else that might have been his pick. But uh, Burnell's a great kid, and 4'9 GPA. He's, he's the kind of guy you want to wow. be around. But yeah, yeah, he's he's a little different. Um, I expect him to end up with Florida State. Wow, that's interesting. What about uh, Ben Hanks Jr.? I, I think uh, I, I did see he just he took a, a Florida official visit, but Miami, Miami's been the one that seems to have been trending with him. I don't know if that might change. This is a weird one. I actually asked somebody about him this weekend. I'm like, does anybody really know where Ben's going? Does anybody? And nobody had an answer for it. And like all the recruiting guys are at OT7. You have to go to this event because there's so many top guys there. And, you know, Chad Simmons and Garcia and everybody. I've never gotten a a clear answer on it. I talked to a Florida contact. He said they think they got a shot. But like, you know, he lives in Miami. But his dad played it for like there's there's so many things. I really think this just comes down to the visits. Maybe take a week or two after. 
I hope for his sake, because his recruitment's probably pretty contested, that he's able to figure it out by mid-July, like a lot of these kids get it over with. But it's right. going to be UF or, or UM. That that would be my strong guess based on what I've been told. Fair. Um, so there were some pretty interesting comments from five-star defensive lineman Elijah Griffin, who just visited Miami over the weekend. This is one of the top players in the country, regardless of position. Now, uh, he does not plan to announce until December. So this this isn't someone who's going to announce during the summer and then you know continue to be recruited until signing day. He doesn't plan to even announce until December, but um, he he told uh, Kane Sport on three that you know one of the players that he talked to during his visit was Justin Scott, just just arrived f- top one of the top defensive linemen in the country last year, kind of like Elijah Griffin is this year, who was an Ohio State commit who ended up flipping to Miami before signing day, and this is what Griffin said about Scott: "quote He was talking about how he was going to go to Ohio State and came here, how that decision was for him, and how he ultimately made it. That meant a lot." A guy who plays the same position saying that about the same size as me. If I was to make that decision to be a hurricane and play right next to him, I think we'd make a great duo, he said. If I was to be a Miami hurricane, I think I'd be a great fit, he told Kane Sports. So obviously Georgia has been the one that's been trending for him. But do you think Miami can get themselves into the mix for Griffin? I think they're the second most likely. Uh, Georgia's the heavy favorite. Uh, That's the program he's kind of followed growing up. I know his grandmother has kind of signed off on him going to Georgia, which, you know, he's a family guy, but he's been to Georgia more than any place else. The key for the Hurricanes, they have to get Elijah back on campus multiple more times to have a realistic shot. Um, He's looking at Clemson a little bit and Southern Cal. I don't think he's going to go to either one of those. Uh, It's Miami or Georgia. And again, sometimes if if you're going to beat the big bad wolf, you got to kind of take something from them. This is why Georgia is always in the title hunt. They get all the D linemen. So yeah. this is arguably the best player in the country. And if you want to beat Georgia, you need to have the players that they wanted. So here's a chance. Yeah, I, I want to ask you about a player that, you know, we had long considered maybe to be a Miami lean. But Clemson, Clemson has been making a serious push for receiver Cortez Mills out of Homestead. And it, it's been so interesting, Brian, because Miami has been in the mix for so many different receivers in this class that it's like, it's hard to tell. You know, some weeks it feels like, hey, they're trending for this guy. Now they're not. It seems like Clemson might be the team. If I'm just reading the tea leaves, Clemson might be the team leading for Cortez Mills right now. Am I overstating that? This gets very touchy. Um, the, the, the leader is probably Clemson, but I'm told that Miami wouldn't take his commitment right now, which has ruffled some feathers. And I'll, That's weird, yeah. Um, I'll, I'll leave it at that. But Miami's going big game hunting, and they like other guys better. Yeah. They, you know, the old saying, one bird in hand's better, two in the bush. But Miami's going with the latter. Uh, they're trying, and we'll see. I mean, Kevin Beard's a phenomenal recruiter. Mario wants to catch up with Georgia. Bam, it's, I get it. But, man, not taking Cortez, who I think is tremendous. I think he's better than some other people do. Okay, if, that's, if what I'm being told is true, that's a high-risk thing, especially – with the South Florida public school kid. That's what Miami's program was built on, but that's what I've been told. Interesting. Well, I want to talk about another player named Cortez when we come back, uh, an interior offensive lineman, Cortez Smith, who just visited Miami. Uh, another top receiver. Again, Miami's receiver board has like 100 names on it. Another top receiver who just visited the U. We're going to continue. we got the recruiting overlord right here, Brian Smith, who's the recruiting expert on the Locked On Network. We keep it rolling. We're not done yet on this brand new episode of Locked on Canes. You want to keep it locked. We're certainly not done with FanDuel. Guys, NBA Finals, Stanley Cup Finals, my hometown Florida Panthers are playing for that championship. Guys, I'm looking at my cats for game two. They won game one. Game two, goal and a half favorites, minus 250. I'm locking them in tonight, guys. I am all about the Panthers taking home that Stanley Cup. And, guys, summertime also means baseball. The NBA Finals are going on. You can bet it all on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks you can use to bet everything from the Finals MVP to who's going to hit one out of the park. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and add a big win to your summer bucket list. FanDuel. America's number one sports book. 
Thank you so much for making this episode of Locked on Canes your first listen and your first watch today. Guys, if you're an everydayer for Locked on Canes, you want to take that everydayer experience to the next level, try our exclusive text messaging service called Locked on Canes Insiders. I include a link in the show description below. Become an insider. You guys can ask me questions one-on-one. -on -one. We give you recruiting scoops, transfer portal. Although oh, transfer portal, is that still really a thing for right now? Well, if it does heat up again, we've got it practice updates, Q&As, become a Locked on Canes insider. Click that link in the show description below. Try it free for 14 days. Then if you like it, you can opt in for $4.99 a month. We give you a lot of added value on there on the Locked on Canes insiders chat. So, uh, Brian, let's talk about another Cortez four-star offensive lineman, Cortez Smith. Uh, he's going to be announcing a decision on July 20th. Uh, he just visited Miami. He said, I got to see the program in a deeper way. He said to On3, just showed how much character they've got, and how much they can offer. Uh, he says they have the two best offensive line coaches in the country, talking about Mario Cristobal and Alex Mirabal. Uh, Cortez Smith, what kind of a player is this, Brian, and where do you think Miami stands? Georgia, but the visit went really, really well, and Georgia's in on so many offensive linemen. I know you're shocked by that, Alex, that it's just a matter yeah. <laughs> Shocker, Georgia's doing well in recruiting. Um this could be an interesting situation. Whether it's now or later, I would not be shocked if this is one of the surprise signees for Miami because at some point you can only take so many O-linemen. And to put it in perspective, Georgia signed six last year, six, and they were all big-time players. Wow. So they're going after another big class. Oh, I, I, at some point that's, this has to end. And while he's been to UGA several times, he didn't commit yet. They get the last crack. Miami kind of set a bar pretty high this weekend. Now – can they hold on? And even if he did commit to Georgia, I just think Miami has more playing time. So I'm curious if they could steal one here. He's a kid from the Atlanta area, et cetera. I get it. It's not easy. But again, if you're going to beat Georgia, you got to take the kids from them. So this, this is an important recruitment for Miami. And no question about that. Uh, so Miami also hosted four-star linebacker Gavin Nix uh, from IMG Academy. He's also going to be visiting Oregon and Florida State later this month. Uh, where do you think Miami stands? I know Derek Nicholson has been recruiting Knicks really hard. I would be, I would put Miami either at number one or two. They're they're right there, and you're right. And Nicholson's, by the way, just for the record, is a really good recruiter. Kids really respect him. Obviously, he's played in the NFL. Uh, he played at Florida State. He's, he's a guy that's just respected in general in the business, and his recruiting acumen is showing up too. So I like Miami here if I had to pick one school. Oregon's always a kind of a weird school to predict with kids visiting out of state. Uh, they're fascinated with it. You know, all these kids, the uniforms and all that. So I never discount Oregon, but Miami's closer because he's from the Kissimmee area. So it's not that far for him to go to school uh, and he plays at IMG. Uh, the only other school I think he might visit would be Notre Dame in the fall. And that's iffy. I'm not sure if that will take place, but I think he'll stay in state. I like Miami's chances the most. Uh, another player, uh, again, we go back to wide receivers. There's so many on Miami's board this summer. Four-star Wes Broward wide receiver Joshua Moore visited, and he named Miami, Georgia, Florida, and Florida State as his top schools last month. He said of Miami, said this to On3, they showed me it's all a big brotherhood family, he said. If we all stick together and stay home, we make the U great again. Um, you know, he talked about development, quarterback play and family brotherhood. Those are the key things to his decision. He added that he spoke with Luke Nickel, the Hurricanes quarterback commit. He was real nice, got to know him and his family. He's a really good player and quick on his feet and smart. And that's obviously important because if Miami can land Joshua Moore, Luke Nickel's probably going to be his quarterback in a couple of years. Joshua Moore would be a lot of fun to throw to. Uh, when I met him last year, like when I walked up to him, like, wow, this kid's a legit 6'3". You know, you see these inflated numbers for players, and then you meet him, you're like, there's no way he's that tall. Joshua Moore was that guy. And just the frame and all that. I look, I liken his frame similar to Jeremiah's and like how it's broad-shouldered, big-bodied kid. I'm not saying he's Jeremiah, but he's, he's really right. good. And I was like, okay, now I know why everybody started offering this kid. Because he doesn't play at a program that you think of Miami and Florida State like hammering, but he's, he's a dominant high school player. If Miami can get him, again, he's one of the few kids that can play that boundary spot that they really need to hit home in this class. Miami did a really good job on the visit. If Luke is talking to him, that probably tells you something as well. And I heard he's one of their top guys at receiver. I like Miami's chances, but don't discount Florida State. 
Don't discount Georgia. I never discount Georgia with a kid. This is a really unique recruitment. Miami has to stop letting SEC schools come down and grab them. That some of the elite players. It's been going on for a long time. You and I have had a lot of conversations about it. This is the kind of kid you cannot lose if you want to ascend to the top of college football. More is a really important recruit. Yeah, and it's nice that he was visiting the same weekend as Luke Nickel. And just a, a quick note on Luke, and you know him as well as anybody, Brian. Uh, he's not taking any more official visits. Miami's going to be his only stop. He's he's about as locked in as you can be in June, right? <laughs> you know, six months before National Signing Day. It's hard to be more locked in than four-star quarterback Luke Nickel is right now. That's a kid every time I send him a message, and I'll, and I'll probably talk to him today, He's just really positive and just trying to get better. He fits yeah. the entire ball of wax for what you want in a quarterback. Good guy, smart, wants his team to be good, wants everybody to excel. He's a leader. Miami did really well to get Luke Nickel. And he's and he's just a proven winner. I mean, it, 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 oh, every yeah. time, every time I, I catch up with, with with what this guy's doing, he's winning more. Like his, uh, in a what was it, a recent seven on seven yeah. with his, his high school team, he he won another seven on seven championship. He's won multiple of those. He's headed to the Elite Eleven finals. His main high school team just won a state championship last year. So this guy's just a winner. Yeah, that's what I mean. Uh, you do all those things I mentioned a moment ago, winning comes right after it. Yeah. He's a team player. He doesn't care if he's throwing checkdowns or bombs. Whatever helps his team win, Luke will do it. So he trains really hard, too. He's around 210 pounds. He looks great. That's a young man that's going to be very successful at the University of Miami. Well, the other proven winner here is Brian Smith. Where are you off to next in your summer travels? you have any more camps or seven-on-sevens uh. coming up? Well, I probably will end up at Future 50, the event that happens every year at IMG with all the top underclassmen recruits. Hopefully that's about it until fall camps start for high school kids because I've traveled enough. Sure has. All right. Make sure you follow him on X at FB Scout underscore Florida. Brian's a colleague of mine at allhurricanes.com. So make sure you check his work there. Uh, he just went uh, in depth on uh, Timothy Merritt, the new Miami commit. Right. He went depth on some of the players he saw and spoke to at OT7. So tons of Brian Smith content there. And again, Timothy Merritt, welcome to the U. We will talk to everyone next time on another episode of Locked on Canes. We are part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.